Why, you would think that I would know the signal by now, but it, I don't. I thought that, that was seamless, Jill. <laughs> that was seamless. Good morning, everybody. Today is Tuesday, December 5th, 2023. I'm Jill Simonian from PragerU Kids, and I have Richard Lim of PragerU Kids and PragerU also yes, <laughs> joining yes. me today. Richard works on uh, you, you Prager research. PragerU Adults. Prager no, no, we don't call it that. It's PragerU and PragerU Prager Kids. PragerU yes. and PragerU Kids. We are, of course, one entity, and Richard does uh, fantastic research uh, for uh, okay. for PragerU and PragerU Kids. So you're joining me today. Before we get started talking about the attack on Pearl Harbor that happened in 1941, because this week obviously is the commemoration of the, let's see, 82nd anniversary of the attack on Pearl Harbor. I want to remind everyone to tell me where you are from in the comments, whether you're joining us on Facebook Live or YouTube Live. We are live mm -hmm. if you are lucky enough to be able to watch and listen right now we Saturday are Saturday night live or <laughs> Tuesday morning Tuesday live. morning yeah, live yes. Tuesday morning live and tell me where you're from what state you're from if you have kids in school if you have grandkids in school if you are in fact a teacher we always want to know at PragerUKids.com also we want to remind you that you can subscribe for free to PragerUKids.com on our website get all of our educational materials including many of the including all of the uh, content that we have teaching about Pearl Harbor and uh, what that attack meant mm -hmm. to America at that time and afterwards and today on our website. Oh yeah, yes, and the book. book is right here. So I um, I wanna get into it. Tell us where you're from and then also uh, let me know if you, oh, I had a question here and I can't find it. Uh, let me know, oh, let me know if you have any questions for us at PragerU Kids. Of course. Yes. If you have any requests for things that you would like to see us uh, create. And we have five minute videos on uh, Pearl Harbor. Right. A five minute video. We do on have Pearl a five minute Victor video. Victor Davis Hansen, who's an incredible scholar. So yes. make sure you check that out as great well. Great for high school kids yes. and great for parents and teachers mm -hmm. as well. So, okay, Richard. As uh, as I introduced you, you are one of our uh, you are our chief researcher. Nerd. Here. Chief nerd. Yes. And this week, of course, we're recognizing the attack on Pearl Harbor that happened in 1941. It took the United States into World War II. It got us involved. Uh, I would like to myth bust with you most of the time. Sure. The times that all of you have watched Richard and I sit here, we like to myth bust. I think the last myth busting uh, session was uh, specifically for Thanksgiving. But today, we really don't have a myth bust, but rather I wanted to have a very frank talk with you about why kids really still need to learn about the attack on Pearl Harbor, even though it was almost 100 years ago, even though we have, you know, experienced horrific attacks here in America since then, namely September 11th. Mm -hmm. Why do kids need to learn about our American heroes? Why mm -hmm. do we need to know about Pearl Harbor? Is it still relevant? Well, so th the thing is, is that the world we live in today, the America we live in today is a product of these historic events. And mm -hmm. th these aren't just events that are in your textbooks. You know, you could go and look up, you know, Pearl Harbor these things happened to real people. 2,403 Americans died that day. Mm -hmm. And those are people that had families and their, their descendants. I mean, people have great uncles or grandparents or uh, relatives that, were, that, that died at Pearl Harbor or were affected by Pearl Harbor. So it, these aren't abstractions, they're real events. And I always like to say that uh, a, a country a country, a history, history for a country is like memory for a person. Yes. You can't live without memory. You can't live without knowing who you are and what you did and, and all those things that shaped you. And it's the same thing for a country. You can't, a country cannot make good decisions if it doesn't know the lessons of history and why things are the way they are. And so Pearl Harbor is such a turning point. People forget that before Pearl Harbor, before World War II, America had had a long history of non-intervention. Mm -hmm. It was this idea that the world is the world and we are America and we have these two oceans to separate us from the world. And we're safe. Yeah, and we're safe. <laughs> and no we problem. don't have to worry about what's happening in the world. And that policy was our policy for a while. 
And then we got attacked and 2,403 Americans were killed. And it was this wake up call that what happens in the world matters for the United States. Now, I'm not saying that means we need to go and intervene everywhere, but it's just the reality that the world was changing. And so in, in a sense, the world that uh, began on December 7th for America is the world that we still live in today. And at the time in 1941, I mean, you mentioned 2,403 people, right? Yes. That's almost as many people who died in the September 11th mm -hmm. attacks. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, when you put it in that context, September 11th was that generation, that greatest generation's mm -hmm. Pearl Harbor was th their 9-11. Yeah, and, and there was really nothing that you could compare it to. So the United States obviously had been involved in World War One, and one of the big events that uh, led to that was the sinking of the Lusitania. And about 120, I think it's 128 Americans died. Now, I'm not comparing tragedies because they were all right, tragedies. Right, terrible. And Europeans, more Europeans died in that one. But the thing is, is that Pearl Harbor was such a wake up call. It was just the order of magnitude was just that much greater. And it was just such a shock for a people that was that were accustomed to being removed from the world's problems to have it right on our soil. Mm -hmm. And so and the Lusitania had happened in 19. Uh, it was like 1915 or 16. So we're talking that was 30 something years before that, you know, and, and so really there was nothing like it. And it is akin to 9-11 in the sense that it was nothing like 9-11 on American soil uh, until it happened. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I can't escape the um, reality now, and we talk about this a lot here mm -hmm. at the office, especially at PragerU Kids, you can't escape the reality that in most of our schools, public schools, private schools, you can't escape that the, the, uh, the education system continues to reinforce a victim mentality mm -hmm. when they're teaching children, whether they're young children, whether they're middle school, whether they're high school, most everything now, history, uh, English, literature, even math. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, yep. it's ridiculous to say, but all of those subjects are really put through the lens of this victim versus oppressor narrative. Mm -hmm. And for whatever sick and twisted reason, there is a heavy concentration of educators trying to make sure that our kids know about victims, victims, victims. You are a victim. You're a victim. Mm -hmm. Sa how sad for you. You are oppressed. However, they are abandoning teaching about the heroes, mm -hmm. the American heroes. Our kids still need to learn about American heroes. And whenever I look at tragic events like September 11th and like Pearl Harbor, what better way to teach about our American heroes and how Americans bonded together after those horrific attacks mm -hmm. to really to really uh, to try and try and right the wrong and try and do good and try and move forward and rebuild mm -hmm. kids need to learn about American heroes absolutely and and the thing is is that when you divide groups and divide an entire country into groups of, of oppressor and oppressed you, you forget and you lose the fact that many of the people that fought for the United States. When you look at uh, the minority groups that fought for the United States, uh, when they talk about the Navajo code breakers, when right. they talk about uh, black Americans, they understood that, yeah, of course, that this country is not perfect, mm -hmm. but they fought for the country. Yeah. They fought for it. And they, could, they, they understood uh, the reality of an imperfect country where you have millions of people. And yes, of course, the United States was imperfect. And that's not something anyone's denying. Right. Um, but they also knew they had perspective and said this is a, an, a, an evil, uh, f you know, foreign attack on our country. And they could they could see that and know that as imperfect as this country is, it's it's worth it, it's worth fighting for. And so when you talk about those heroes, that's part of their story. And, and I think, unfortunately, when you look at the world as they're all defined by their status as an oppressed person, and they can't possibly break out of it. They can't possibly fight for a country that has great ideals. Then you, you lose all of that. And yeah. unfortunately, we've lost so much of that. Yeah, I you know? wish if you are a teacher right now watching, please, we invite you. Take Richard's statement that you just <laughs> talked about, about the, the oppressed 
fighting for a country that is not perfect to mm-hmm. make it better because look at how far we have come. We're we're still not perfect. We all yeah, know that as Americans. Yeah. We're never going to but be perfect. But our ideals transcend our imperfections. To, and towards a more perfect union. And that's something no country has. Right, yeah. right. Oh, So if you're a teacher, take what Richard said. Take mm-hmm. that clip of the previous, what was it, three minutes. Take mm-hmm. it, take it. We invite you to take it and to share it with your students. I want to talk a little bit now about some of what we do have on our PragerU Kids website. And there is a, I I want you to shed a little bit of light on this, Richard, Hmm. because here's a confession to everyone. Yes, I am uh, extremely involved in the creation of Otto's Tales and uh, Craftery. Uh, I'm, you know, I will write many of the scripts and I will also appear in the videos, but I have not seen every single Leo and Layla episode. And there is an episode on her website, Leo and Layla's History Adventures for free if you go to PragerUKids.com. Now, I want you to help me pronounce this person's name, Mm Sadao Munemori. Mm -hmm. And the episode is uh, titled Sadao Munemori, Patriotism in the Midst of Persecution. And this particular Leo and Layla teaches elementary students to be a victor, not a victim, not a victim, with a brave Japanese-American World War II hero who felt he had much to prove after Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. And when Leo and Layla, in this episode, when he, they meet him, they learn how he and his family sacrificed and persevered to really prove their loyalty to the United States. Is I'm curious if you can offer any insight into this episode and the, the creation of this episode. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, we, we cover so many historic figures, the, the ones that everyone knows, George Washington, right. Lincoln, et cetera, Winston Churchill. Um, but we all know that there's so many figures in history that aren't as well known but their their stories are incredible and their contributions are incredible and Sadao Munamori he was one of those people he was uh, uh, an American of Japanese descent and his family was tossed in an internment camp wow. uh, President Roosevelt's policy of j- uh, interning the Japanese mm-hmm. and uh, so you know you want to talk about oppression and yeah. your rights being uh, violated I mean th- this this is what happened and, and yet he fought and he, he, he fought heroically during World War II and he, he died a hero. Wow. He, he essentially sacrificed his own life for, for uh, uh, his, his comrades. And so it's really, it's a story that needs to be told mm-hmm. and we, we tell those stories. Some people say, oh, you know, we're whitewashing history. This mm-hmm. is just not true. They, they don't even know our content. They, yeah. ex- they expose their own ignorance if mm-hmm. they say that. But we're, we're not doing that because it's some sort of agenda. This is a story people should it's know. It's a real story. It's a story that people this should know. This is a know. story of our heroes. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Our heroes. And, and, you know, so he experienced, uh, you know, uh, things that were horrible with mm-hmm. his family in internment camp. And yet he still fought for our country and he represented our flag. He, mm-hmm. he and, and so if anyone wants to denigrate the flag, they're denigrating the flag that Sadao Munamori fought oh. for. And so that just made me. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's a great story. And I hope more people learn about it. And and, you know, his parents had uh, a flag up uh, in commemoration of, of mm-hmm. their son, Saddam Munamori, mm-hmm. who, who died in combat. But it's it's really an incredible story. And and there, there's so many stories like this. Again, this is free on PragerUKids.com. Leo and Layla's History Adventures is created for third graders through fifth graders. Although I frankly, and I've said this before, and I'll say it again, my own knowledge of history is severely lacking. And I went to great public schools. I, I'm very, I, I used to be very proud to say, oh, I got a public school education because I was once a huge advocate for public education. That has since changed since then, now that you know things that you can't unsee. But when I watch episodes on our own website that I particularly have not been directly affiliated with creating, I am fascinated by how much I still don't know. And these videos are so important to be able to teach kids. And so, you know, third through fifth grade, uh, or if you're a parent like me, whose (laughs) historical knowledge is still under construction and still under renovation, you can, you can check out all these episodes. And this particular one that really speaks to uh, this week's commemoration of uh, the the, um, uh, Pearl Harbor Harbor attack, Leo and Layla's history adventures. Well, I I, I just wanted to say that uh, people, if you know someone who's a history buff and all that stuff, 
usually they'll be the first to tell you that the more history you learn, the more you realize how much you don't you know. You don't know. And, and so, you know, when people say, oh, Richard, you know so much history. You do know so my, much. My, well, my response is, do you have any idea how much history there is to know? I mean, there's yeah. just so much history. You know, Sudan Munamori's story is just one of countless yeah. stories that I don't know. And mm -hmm. I, so I'm learning. That's mm -hmm. one of the joys of being in this job that I'm learning myself. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think anyone who studies history, the only real response you could have is, and I don't want to say like a false humility, mm -hmm. but a real humility because it's, you just, you just marvel at how much you could spend your whole life studying the history of one city and not even really know that city. Mm -hmm. You know, I've studied presidents, but uh, you know, you can, there, there's so much more you can learn. So before we sign off, I have to ask you about something kind of controversial because we were talking about it before we actually went live. Mm -hmm. FDR. Oh, yes. And his role in Pearl Harbor. Tell me about what you know or what I guess some controversial conversations are about Franklin Delano Roosevelt during the time of the Pearl Harbor attack. Share sure. with me what we were discussing before, please. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, President Roosevelt, uh, one thing that's interesting to know about him is that before he was president, he was the assistant secretary of the Navy. And he was obsessed with the Navy, absolutely fascinated by the Navy. And um, uh, he was somebody that uh, he, he would go sailing and he just loved the sea, right? So he had this personal affinity for the Navy. And under FDR's watch, uh, basically uh, much of the Pacific fleet was, was destroyed mm -hmm. by the Japanese attack. Right. And there have been accusations that he may have known about Pearl Harbor, the, the attack, the impending attack and positioned America into, you know, the, positioned the Japanese into attacking first. And now my personal opinion is that I, I think that there is, um, uh, it, it's a theory that is based on a lot of speculation. Right? Okay. You're not going to find a smoking gun there. One thing I will say is that FDR was definitely a wily politician. He okay. really was. And he, he he's quoted by his aides saying that I, I'll do anything uh, in order to get the job done, even willing to lie. And he actually even told Orson Welles, who was uh, uh, one of the great actors of all time, he said to Orson, the quote is, you and I are the two best actors in America. <gasps> so he When was that? Yeah, uh, I don't know the exact <laughs> date, but he, he was reported to have said that. So he was somebody who was definitely willing to engage in deception. Kay. Now, I'm not going to say that FDR knew about the attack and positioned and because that's, you know, that that's a whole other A lot other of people thing. will call you, call you conspiracy I know, theorists. I, know. I, 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 pers I think that th there's no smoking gun in that. I mean, there are cables that supposedly were intercepted, but it's there's a large debate about that. But what I will say is that there's been this attempt to say that because uh, America uh, put an embargo on Japan, mm -hmm. therefore they gave Japan no choice but to attack Pearl Harbor. And therefore, America was culpable for this and used it for you know purposes of dominating the world and all this other stuff. Uh, that's just not true. Okay. Um, and regardless of what FDR did, he embargoed Japan and preventing them from getting a lot of the resources that they needed to expand, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that when the soldiers fought the Japanese uh, military, they were fighting an oppressive government that was trying to impose its will over all of Asia. And it was it was a worthy cause, and mm -hmm. it was a good thing that that government was defeated. And so mm -hmm. for me, what, regardless of what you think about the conspiracy theories and all that stuff, the, it, it's it's when people turn it into this moral relativism and say, oh, well, um, uh, World War II wasn't really the good war. You know, America wasn't really on the right side. Oh, well, wow. if you look at the atrocities. That's terrifying. Yeah, well, but if you look <laughs> at the atrocities committed during that time by the Axis powers, whether they were Nazi Germany or the Japanese militaristic government, and, and I'm talking about the government specifically, mm -hmm. you, you you see a, a government that was doing horrible things. And I, you know, I'm, I'm uh, an American of Philippine descent and mm -hmm. also part Chinese. And th the government in Japan was doing horrible things to people in the Philippines and people in China, th things that uh, rival uh, what, what happened in Europe. Okay. And we all know the horrific yeah. things that happened in Europe. So, so that, that's where I would always say, look, you know, whatever you think about the conspiracy theories, don't let it turn into this moral relativistic thing where, oh, America did this. And, you know, regardless of what America did at the time, it was it was the Japanese government that imposed uh, just horrific atrocities over 
what was you know over peoples in Asia, and that's that's the real story there. You see, you see why I like talking to him, everyone. <laughs> I I always say I enjoy learning from you. And Richard, you have your own podcast called This American President. Yes. yes. On where can people find it? A- anywhere you listen to podcasts, Spotify, on your podcast app, Apple Podcasts. It's it's all over. So there, you so. too can have Richard Lim in your ear during the day sleep, yes, and learn yes. something new yes. like we do at Prager U Kids. Thank you so much. Before we go, I want to see if there are any comments. Like I said, today was sort of just a history lesson for all of us trying to figure out the best way to teach our children about these historical happenings that many, unfortunately, say are no longer uh, relevant. But as we've discussed here, of course, they are. Pearl Harbor was a horrific attack Mm -hmm. on America. It got us involved in World War II. It is definitely something worthy of teaching and in, in motivating students to learn more about so that we can have a common knowledge, a common cultural literacy, a common uh, bond between all of us as Americans regarding fighting, uh, fighting evil and making the world better and coming together to rebuild. Could, could I have just yes. one more point? One more. I was yes. going to say, uh, as a bookend to what happened in World War II, mm-hmm. um, when the uh if if you go visit first of all i I think every american should visit the pearl harbor national memorial it's an incredible place um it's very poignant uh i mean it's a resting place uh for there were 1177 uh sailors and marines that died on the ss arizona and Mm -hmm. the hull is underwater and you can go and you can pay respects there and there's still oil from that ship that leaks out about nine quarts every day that that leak out and they call them the tears of the Arizona and we talk about that yeah we talk about in that. our yeah. autos tales book and episode on Prager and it wasn't com. that long ago like, mm-hmm. that the ship is still leaking out the oil yeah. from from that and uh, one thing I wanted to mention is mm-hmm. that uh, when the when the Japanese government surrendered there was a Japanese official and he was on the SS Missouri and this is a ship that is uh, currently in Pearl Harbor. It, it, the surrender didn't happen in Pearl Harbor, but the ship is now in Pearl Harbor. And this this man, Toshika, Toshikazu Kase, he was part of the surrender delegation, and he was expecting what literally every single uh, losing side expects to, right. you know, tortured, executed, mm-hmm. who knows. And he, he, sat, he stood there, and he heard Douglas MacArthur talking about how he wanted a world dedicated to the dignity of man, a better world shall emerge out of the blood and carnage of the past. And Kase was so stunned. He said, here is the victor, the United States, announcing the verdict to the prostrate uh, prostrate enemy. He can impose a humiliating penalty, but instead he pleads for freedom, tolerance, and justice. And he said he expected the worst humiliation, but he was thrilled beyond words, spellbound, and thunderstruck and he knew that if it was on the other side if the united states he lost he doubted whether they would have shown the same magnanimity so mm-hmm. it shows you that the united states for this man who was on the losing side mm-hmm. offered a, 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 cer- a level of mercy that was just stunning no one had ever expected that so. and that's again something that our students need to learn exactly and that's a simple concept that's a simple uh, reality mm-hmm. historical reality that you can teach in depth to high school students mm-hmm. yeah a- a- and and high school students have the maturity to be moved mm-hmm. by that olive branch so to speak that was extended Mm -hmm. to the enemy you can teach that to kindergartners Mm -hmm. to show what kindness means that's a story that really transcends all age groups yes and there's no reason why that particular story as well as so many others Mm -hmm. honoring america and our uh, heroes and what happened after uh, the Pearl Harbor attacks in World War II. We, we there's no reason why we can't share that with students some of the comments I, uh, oh, I lost a really good all one. All positive, all positive. I'm all sure. positive, yeah. all positive. Yes. Uh, where can families purchase the Pearl Harbor book? PragerUKids.com. We have an episode, Otto's Tales, Let's Visit Pearl Harbor. You can watch the episode with your kids. You can also click the link that's right below the episode, and it will take you to our purchase page, which is on Amazon, so you can purchase the book there. It really is a beautiful book. I'll just quickly show you. I don't know what picture this is. I just 
flip to it right here. It's fully illustrated. These books are created for kindergarten through second grade, but the big secret that's not so secret is that I know fifth graders who love this book and these these books put um, oh thank you my assistant mm -hmm. my unofficial <laughs> these books put very complex historical happenings into age appropriate uh, stories and terms and messages that uh, that that really is age appropriate. There's nothing in here that talks about anything that will scare children mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or um, you know make them uncomfortable or any anything like that. At Not the, gratuitous at the tender, shock value. Exactly. Stuff. There's yeah, no yeah. gratuitous shock value. Yeah, yeah. It re they really are. Um, they really are well done. They really, and I'm not saying that. I know I seem biased because yes, these are our books and these are our episodes, but uh, they really are well done. Uh, one of the comments that I uh, was curious to read the questions from Faye. Thank you, Faye. The question is enlightening to the fact that we don't teach history, state, American political, or world history. No civics, no cursive handwriting. Kids and teens cannot count back your change from a purchase. They are not learning how to balance a checkbook. This is all very true, Faye, talking about the state of our education system. Um, that's all very true. All children should be taught our history. Yes. Let's see. I'm trying to scroll through. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't, Couldn't agree, agree more. more. Yes. Oh, here's the one that really moved me from Bill. Yes, it's part of our history. I can't believe this is even asked. Bill, if it makes you feel any better or offer any comfort, Richard and I can't even believe that this is being asked anymore about why are certain historical events relevant or not relevant to teach to children because as we found so often in the last uh, few years in particular that children really are not being taught such foundational parts mm -hmm. of our history as Americans and they're not being taught who we are as Americans well, and, 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 and it really they, is tragic. When they do teach history, it's from a, a completely anti-American agenda driven Correct. lens. So when they do learn it, they are teaching some history, mm -hmm. but it's it's an incredibly selective history mm -hmm. that, that uh, emphasizes uh, just the absolute worst of America. The absolute and worst. And no, no one is saying don't teach the mistakes and the flaws. We teach that stuff all the time, but teach the whole story. That's all we're saying. Now, uh, I also wanted to make sure that we did mention some of those heroes at Pearl Harbor. Okay, name so, them quickly because yeah, we're almost yeah. out of time. S Samuel <laughs> Fuqua, uh, he was a Missouri native who braved gunfire, uh, and he, he led the evacuation from the SS Arizona, mm. saved lives, got the Medal of Freedom. George Welch and Kenneth Taylor, they're actually in, in the book. They are in um, this book, yes. So they were it was some of the first pilots to get airborne and uh, launch the counterattack. And, of course, Dory Miller, the cook mm. and laundry attendant on the SS West Virginia. And he became the first black American to earn the Navy Cross. He was injured. Uh, he helped move the injured, and then he manned one of the ship's machine guns. And so all of wow. these people fought for the American flag in response. They're, they're heroes, they're absolute heroes, and we need to know their names because yeah. they're, they're, they're a part of, of our, our whole story. They're a part of our fabric, yes. and they're a part of us. Uh, we thank you. Thank you, Richard. Check thank out you. Richard on This American President podcast. Check out PragerUKids.com, giving you resources to help fill in all the gaps that are lacking about teaching history. Um, and, and, and really uh, d d teaching kids to honor America through our faults, to find the good in, in, our, um, in our history mm -hmm. and how we rebuilt after destruction and how Americans came together after tragedy. We thank every single one of you who's our supporters, all of you who are serving in the military, all of you who had family members, grandparents who served in the military, maybe fought in World War II, fought uh, at Pearl Harbor, all of you, we thank you so much for your support. What we're doing here teaching kids is, so, is, is to equip them with the ability to love our country and defend our country for future generations. That's why we do what we do here. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you all. See you all next time. Mm -hmm.